Hey guys, Blazing Wrath here, and today I'm going to give my thoughts on Halo Infinite's weapon sandbox and a brief mention on the equipment. This will pretty much be an update video of the first Infinite weapon sandbox analysis. If you want to go see the first video I did, uh, link will be down in the description. That being said, I'm going to go over that video here, so watching the first one I did may not be necessary. So I'll basically be pausing certain parts of the video and give additional thoughts on whether some of my opinions change or not since now that we got to try them in a PvP setting. Better grab some popcorn and soda, because this is going to be a long one. I know. I know guys, I know. Automatics have headshot multipliers even on plasma weapons, and every gun that doesn't have an optics has a standard zoom. If I had my way, there wouldn't be any headshot multipliers on autos, or like, not every gun needs uh, need to be able to zoom. Now with that being said, let's begin. First, let's talk about the assault rifle. Overall, I really like it. But its range is a bit too much. It's like 343's weapon sandbox team is really stubborn and didn't and still didn't really learn their lesson from Halo 5. The fact that the gun has headshot multipliers, again, doesn't help either. That being said, I do like the recoil pattern on the gun, as well as its bloom. I found myself bursting the trigger to try and land those headshots. So here are the numbers on the AR. And here are my suggestions. As you can see, I would recommend nerfing its damage a bit, and probably increase the bloom because the weapon doesn't drastically spread until reaching near the end of the mag. I think the crosshairs should bloom a bit earlier. Next, let's talk about the Pulse Carbine. Overall, I like this weapon, however, its damage output is surprisingly high for, for a plasma weapon. But when actually using this against bots and real players, it's actually not bad, and it's just really good at stripping shields. So I probably wouldn't change the damage output despite it being uh, the damage output being really high. With that being said, here are the stats I got, and here are my suggestions. Like I said, its damage output may be high on paper, but in practice, it's just a shield stripper, and I really like that, and I think that's uh, what's fun about it. Also, because it's just a shield stripper, when using it in a real match, it's a great assist weapon. I was using the Pulse Carbine just, just stripping shields and constantly uh, kept switching to my sidekick. Or I just used it and let my teammates finish off uh, the other team. Probably the reason I'd recommend decreasing the tracking and increasing the projectile speed is because the Needler is already a tracking weapon alongside the charged plasma pistol shot. Next is the BR, and this is probably my favorite BR in the series. I don't have much to say on it, except the fact that when PvP was turned on, the BR really started to shine, and the sidekick really started to struggle to compete against it. Its damage output is fine, but here are the stats. And here are my recommendations. According to the game's menus, the BR has a 2.5 time scope rather than its usual 2 time scope. So I recommend making it a 2 time zoom, just so the sidekick uh, can compete against it. Also, I know probably not everyone remembers Halo 4, but Halo 4's BR has a very subtle recoil mechanic where every time you pulled the trigger, the reticle moved up, but it never reset back to its uh, original position. Not sure about that change, but just thought I'd mention it. Let's pause here. Now, I did notice in the Flight 2 tech test that the descriptions for most weapons have changed, but I still think the scope is still a 25 times zoom. However, I think that's okay now, and I'll explain why when we get to the commando. I'm still unsure about the Halo 4 recoil mechanic. Uh, I personally have no problem with it, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Next up is the commando. Not sure how I feel about this weapon. I like it, but it's a little unclear on what tier does this weapon fit in. Is it tier 1 like the assault rifle, sidekick, and BR? Or is it tier 2 like the Bulldog, Needler, and Heatwave? Anyway, here are the stats. And my recommendations. Again, not sure what 343 is trying to do with this gun. Obviously it's a precision automatic hybrid rifle. It just depends on what power level 343 wants it to be. Because with Halo 5, 343 looked at the SMG and Storm Rifle, uh, Storm rifle and said they're tier 1. But over time, as we kept using them, they were kind of heading into that tier 2 territory because their damage output was absolutely insane. By the way, I'm talking about pre-patch Halo 5, before 343 nerfed a lot of weapons in that game. But maybe decreasing its headshot damage uh, by 1 could help the sidekick fight back a bit. 
I pretty much still agree with my opinions. However, one change I did notice in the second flight is that the commando now zooms in two times instead of three times. While I think this was an unnecessary change, this does make sense for the BR to have its 2.5 times zoom, considering it has a scope, versus the commando's red dot sight, so to speak. The only thing I would change from what I said is that instead of a 5% decrease in recoil, I would like to see a 5% decrease in bloom. Simply, simply because boom is a random factor and cannot be controlled by the player. Versus recoil, which is much more manageable and can be controlled by the player. Next is the new shock rifle. Now I don't really have a lot to say on this because this weapon is still fairly new to me. And this was only usable on Behemoth. What's weird is that now there are two kinds of vantage snipers. This and the skewer. Not sure what, what to think about that, however, I do like the electric gimmick when firing at opponents or interactable items, and electric shock connects when any anyone or anything metal is nearby. Speaking of the sidekick, I really like this thing. It's the Halo 2 pistol, only if it was actually good. I do think it needs a little pick-me-up though, so here are the current stats. And here are my recommendations. I think these changes will help this gun fight against the BR and Commando. Probably have, a, probably have to slightly decrease the rate of fire so it doesn't sh outshine the AR at close range. A quick side note I want to get out there is that I've noticed a huge debate going on on Twitter talking about if the AR is good, is, is uh, too good or not, or if it's fine the way it is. Look, the AR is supposed to be good at close and even at a solid mid-range. But even if you get that solid mid-range, you probably don't want to use the AR. That's when your pistol comes into play. If you're only using the AR in all, your in all of your engagements, then that's a problem. And there wouldn't be a point f uh, to have a pistol in the first place. Your pistol should be used at longer ranges and should be competing against other precision rifles. Moving swiftly along, next is the plasma pistol. Let's get through this quick, so here are the stats. Recommendations. Now I know decreasing the body shot count down to 12 is controversial, but is it really that big of a deal? This, is all, uh, this thing will always be a pea shooter no matter what. Besides, much like the Pulse Carbine, you'd probably want to use it to strip shields and, instead of health anyways. So, my opinions pretty much still stand. Especially since now that it has been discovered that the PP does no longer EMP vehicles, much like in Halo CE. So now the plasma pistol really is a PP. The tracking on the charge shots is better than Flight 1, uh, however, the strength of the tracking isn't strong. It really is back to being a little PP like it is, was in Halo CE. To those that were saying this weapon was OP in the first flight, just because it was able to quote unquote kill, Remember that we were only going up against bots in the first fight, so I think my suggestions might be necessary now. Next up is the Bulldog, and I know I was on that, bag, on that bandwagon of this thing replacing the classic shotgun we've had for years. However, this shotgun is different enough to where the classic shotgun could still have a place in the weapon sandbox. So here are the current stats. And my recommendations. The rate of fire is fine, but I'd like it to be faster as this thing is very fun to shoot. However, to compensate this, I'd recommend decreasing its round count by one. That way the heat wave and probably whenever the classic shotgun makes a return could have a larger round count. But both the classic shotgun and heat wave are balanced because you have to reload one shot at a time, versus the Bulldog's quick mag swap. Okay, so now a few things I noticed in Flight 2 is that the recoil has been decreased. Wasn't necessary, but it's a nice buff. And I also noticed, as well as everyone else, is that the rate of fire seemed nerfed or changed in some way. Tapping the trigger quickly is actually really slow, but holding the trigger brings the rate of fire back to how it was in Flight 1. Not sure if this was intentional or a bug by 343. Either way, tapping the trigger quickly should be the way to go, because holding the trigger doesn't make sense, and it's not full auto, and that's kind of misleading given the animation. 
That being said, the only thing I'd change from what I said is instead of increasing the rate of fire, I'd probably increase the reload speed instead, even if it's just a little bit. Speaking of the heat wave, that's up next. This definitely feels like 343's definitive version of the scatter shot. It's definitely a very weird and unique shotgun. It makes you want to see other creative and gimmicky things they can do with their other Promethean weapons. So here are the stats. And here are my suggestions. Definitely need the damage buff because I had one instance where I shot a guy point blank and then went for a melee. I didn't kill him and I died. So that's why I think it could use a damage buff. Lastly, I think the old fire needs a bit of a rework because the bouncing projectiles are unique, but they're nothing more than just a gimmick, which is why uh, you see the recommendations on screen. The Halo 5 scatter shots bouncing projectiles homed in on the opponent on the opponent's like last location, and it was really nice. It wasn't overpowered, and it was reliable from time to time. I pretty much still stand with what I said. However, much like the Bulldog, the heat wave suffered the same problem. The rate of fire has been drastically nerfed, and this weapon doesn't need any nerfs to begin with. Again, not sure if this rate of fire nerf was intentional or a bug, but definitely not needed. Other than that, my opinion still stands. Next is the Needler, and I gotta say, it is definitely functioning a bit differently in Infinite. And by that I mean this thing is supposed to be a weird automatic with homing projectiles that explodes when multiple shots connect. But the weird thing about it is that this thing is an automatic weapon that ironically sucks at close range, but it's really good at long range. Here, in Infinite, th uh, this thing is now basically an SMG, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It still homes in at range, however it's not as good like in previous games. It's kind of back to being shit like in Halo 1 and 2. So the solution to fix that was just to make it an SMG. And you know what? I think it's fine, and it's definitely fun to use. So here are the stats. My suggestions. Now look, I'll be honest, I don't know anything about coding or really how much world units affect the game, so that's why I only recommend one or two world units. And to keep the needler in check so it's not too ridiculous, I recommend decreasing its needle count that you see on screen. Next is the Sniper. Here are the stats. My recommendations. For some reason, 343 decided to give this gun spread when firing from the hip, which the Sniper has never had before, so 343, please remove that, and literally copy the bloom from Reach. Next is the skewer. This thing is awesome, but very difficult to use. I'm honestly not sure what to do with it, so here are the stats. My recommendations. Now I'm not sure about increasing the projectile velocity as this thing is, you know, I don't want it to be another like insta-kill sniper that's easy to use or something. But I think definitely the, the next two are you know, like for sure. like. Because this this thing has a slow projectile velocity, the second zoom kind of feels useless, and also the, the amount the amount of red around the scope is a bit too cluttering, and you know clutters the vision too much. So I like to see the decrease in red coloring when zoomed in. I pretty much still agree with my opinions, and since we've been introduced to the shock rifle, I think the second zoom uh, should be removed from the skewer and will be much more useful on the shock rifle. And that's pretty much all all I have to say on the skewer. Next is the Ravager. I thought this thing looked like shit when it was first revealed, and it was just a giant rectangle on screen. But 343 did a good job in adding more detail and more colors, so it looks fine now. But anyways, here are the stats. My suggestion. So I'm assuming this thing is pretty much supposed to be a banished grenade launcher, so I guess a power weapon, so it could use maybe a... a the primary fire could use a blast radius increase, and maybe a rate of fire increase. I'm not sure about that one, but I think definitely the first. Okay, so some quick thoughts I'd like to give now that, that like I don't agree with anymore is my second suggestion. Uh, I don't agree with my second suggestion anymore. 
but I still agree with the first one. The Ravager could use a slight blast radius buff. I'd also like to mention that the charge shot actually worked in the second flight, and I think the charge shot is fine the way it is. Finally, we come to the rocket launcher, and honestly, I have nothing to say on it. It functions like you'd expect. Now, one weapon I didn't cover in my original video is a gravity hammer. I know everyone feels mixed on how this weapon is performing. On one hand, this is much more fun to use than previous games. On the other hand, the slow swing speed and lethality of this weapon could be detrimental to Griff Ball, especially since the gravity part of the hammer is drastically nerfed. The only suggestion I can think of is when pressing the melee button, the player should swing the hammer fast like a standard melee. Much like in previous games where the player bobs opponents on the head with the bottom of the hammer, or using the blade for fast melee swing when someone is really close and or going for an assassination. Now, some brief thoughts on grenades, equipment, and other miscellaneous things such as grenade throwing and motion tracker. The drop wall needs a buff to the device itself, as it is too weak. The device that spawns the shield is actually weaker than the, than the deployable cover from Halo 3. So I definitely would recommend buffing the health of the device. And the panels maybe just need a very small health buff, but not too drastic. As a trade-off for those buffs, the only nerf I'd give the drop wall is the player should only be able to carry one, not two. The grapple shot, for the most part, pretty much plays fine. However, Unless when playing online matchmaking, or definitely when it comes to competitive settings, the grapple shot should not be able to interact with objectives such as the flag and oddball. The threat sensor has received a nerf since the first flight. It used to pulse only 6 times during the first flight. Now it only pulses 3 times, so I think this is a good change, and I believe the player should only be able to carry one. Lastly, just like I said in my original video, the threat sensor should not be able to stick onto players, as fun as that is to do. As for the overshield, I really do like the change in color in that now the when the player turns on overshield, they literally glow white and there's some electric effects around it. So I really like that change. However, the overshield itself is pretty weak. I think it's only one layer like it is in Halo 3 and Reach. So I think it needs to have two layers of shields, much like in MLG Halo 3 and Halo Reach, as well as how it uh, performs in Halo 5. As for the camo power-up, it pretty much works fine, and really the only issue that I have with it is that, in, at least in the second flight, when you're moving around, you do show up in radar like in previous games. However, I do like the Halo 5 change, and even in the first flight, where whenever you moved around, you did not appear on radar. So I'd really like that change to be reverted. Next, let's quickly talk about grenades. Now I know there were some people that felt that the game felt too grenade-happy, and I think I may know what uh, may have some speculation as to why that is. Okay, so first of all, the arena maps are pretty small minus Behemoth. The grenade throw input might be too fast when throwing two grenades consecutively, so maybe slowing down the grenade throwing animation a bit could help mitigate grenade spanning. The spike grenades still need a damage buff. To be more specific, the initial explosion of the spike grenade needs a buff. Not uh, not the spikes themselves, because in Halo 3, when a spike grenade is right next to you, or is, or if you're standing underneath it, the spike grenade actually killed you. Currently in Infinite, that's not the case, and instead leave you very weak. I think the initial explosion should be able to kill you, considering these are one of your special type of grenades. The dynamo grenades are pretty cool, and I like them. The only thing I'd like to see change is the damage output on health should be nerfed. Keep its damage output on shields, but it should not be good against unshielded players, unless you throw two of them consecutively. Lastly, something I want to mention briefly about the motion tracker is that the range has been nerfed from 20 meters to 18 meters. I don't think this was a good change. I believe 343 had it right the first time, so 20 meters would be the way to go for me, and I'd like to see that return. And that's going to do it for this video. 
If you made it this far, then holy fucking shit. Thank you so much, and hit the living shit out of that like button. Share this video with anyone who'd be interested. You can also find me on Twitch and Twitter. Links will be down in the description. And until next time, peace.